I try to be family friendly with how I word these scripts and everything. Why did the creators decide to urinate all over Broly's character in this one? Literally, Trunks pees on him. I'd like to say that nearly sums up my feelings towards it, as this one is much worse than I recall. The opening prologue is interesting as it shows how Broly survived the first movie and somehow got frozen in ice instantly and stayed there for seven years. Still, that part is still vague and unclear. I kind of like that poetic yet anticlimactic punch from Goku, which the damage is still seen here, didn't kill him. Broly is a survivor, and I'll go into that more in my Broly movie review. There's a reason we're doing this one first. You'll see. The following 30 minutes after that is a huge test of patience. I'm not the biggest fan of Gotenna trunks. They're fine, but I find them to be really annoying when they're overused. Small doses, and they're okay, but they're extremely overpowered as well. So to have Broly, of all villains, spend over half the movie chasing them around is beyond silly. Not to mention that the weakest Z fighter ever in Videl is also here. In the midst of the bad, there's a couple funny jokes. Trunks mooning Broly to anger him is a bit insulting, but as a distraction, it's kind of humorous. There's a general playfulness between Videl and the boys that's endearing. It just all goes on too long. It goes way too far with it. Goten waking Broly up with his crying just vindicates all the memes about Kakarot, even if it makes sense on paper and execution, it's not the greatest idea. There's also a really random subplot about a mountain monster that eats people as sacrifices to appease wrath or something. More on that in a bit, but it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. The last 20 minutes when Gohan finally shows up and goes Super Saiyan 2 because he does with the hair. They go out of their way visually to show that. Really save this from being a complete disaster. Considering how weak Gohan is here, he does surprisingly well against Broly, which feeds into the power scaling theories that we all have. And the humor steps up a bit and the fun factor does as well. There's a great cameo from Krillin. The fight is all too brief, but it leads to a spectacular finishing beam struggle and hilarious moment from Videl. But again, seriously, that triple father-son coming out of my house is truly a sight to behold. As is Broly blowing up, yikes. Poor guy, that was gory. This entire stretch feels like classic DBZ and ends the film on a positive note. They skim by on the skin of their teeth to get there though. The visuals are really well done, minus some reuse shots from the first film, and the soundtrack is still decent. And for its canonicity, it's sometime around the martial arts tournament pre-boot. Easy. Back to the human monster sacrifice thing monster plot. Honestly, as grating as it was in a Broly movie, this is what the movie should have been. But here's the scenario. Don't use Broly. Use Lord Slug or Turles, or maybe even Broly, but someone from the earlier movies would have been much more interesting for that subplot in particular. I get wanting to bring Broly back, and he could have worked in this subplot, even if it doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but if you use Slug or Turles, it could be called Slug Second Coming or Turles Second Coming. They could turn into Great Ape or Great Namek. It has a nice ring to it. Heck, I'd, I'd have been fine with both of them, Sort of like in Xenoverse 2, secretly training in secret and using ha human sacrifices to, for Nameki magic to create Tree of Might fruit to get stronger. And considering Gohan's pivotal role in both of those films, it could have been a great foil for him for them coming back. Just like Garley Jr. was in the show. You can still do a Broly movie. Combine the elements of this and one or two ideas from Bio Broly, which we'll get to. And you could have a decent second outing set around the time of the Boo's arc's beginnings. Maybe Broly crash lands in a sound by whoever clones him. Let Vegeta get revenge. It would have worked and made much more sense. I'll just save some of the rest of this till we get to the next one. I know I'm rambling here, but just big sigh. But really, I, I just wrote two movie ideas that are better than this phoned-in sequel. A couple good ideas and well-executed moments keep it from being the worst, but my gosh, it's painfully average when it's good and flat out annoying when it's not. The sum does not equal the parts and it's, it's disappointing. I give Broly Second Coming 2.5 out of 5 stars. Thanks for watching, like and subscribe, and even though I didn't care for this one and some other ones coming up, remember, always look for the good.